I'm going to give you a very quick overview of the system that we're going to talk about uh, today. So we have a space, it has ethanol in it, it has eight sensors around there. There's makeup air coming in at a constant volume. There's a matched exhaust fan, and those are just tied in with the handoff auto switch on the VFD. So when you turn that on, it turns those both on. If there's an alarm in the space, it'll kick this up to a high speed and pull in extra air through these relief dampers. And then if that doesn't clear itself, then we will turn on this horn and strobe. There's one in the space and one out of the space. The ones in the space are explosion proof. And then if that doesn't clear, we also have a sequence uh, to shut down the process, which could be the source of the leak. So let's go look at the system as it's installed. When you walk up to this controller, it's the 301C controller. It's on this wall. You have your power sources in there, uninterruptible power supplies. That outlet is feeding those, and then it's coming back up here. That's where your horn and strobes are tied in, and then that green thing is your low voltage power supply that's feeding your um, gas detection system. So when you walk up to it, you can push a button. You can actually scroll through what the different sensors are doing. You can see AD one, two, three. That's showing you, we have eight sensors on this system. So that's showing you that all of them are reading uh, nothing and it's normal operation. So if you hit enter, this will pull up your password. Right now I've got it set to one and a bunch of dashes. So now that'll give us access. Now, I have put the password in here, and there's the customer service number for Honeywell, so you can use that. Now, if you look at this control board, these buttons, and that's enter and exit, just like that. All right, we've got our relays. This is our horn and strobes that we want to have set for alarm B, which is a high level and tells everybody to get out. This shutdown is for the process equipment. And so we want it to be on that high level, same as this, but we wanna give it a time delay, or at least that's what we've discussed is giving it a time delay so that it will shut down if this hits and they have a minute to clean it up and they can't get anything done. And then this is that's high speed to be 30 some odd for the side. fan, which is the signal to our VFD back this there. I, I turned on the pressure builder. We started this 301C. We used the individual XLR sensors. We went into each one and we gave it an address. And then we went here and we went over to network and we told it to go re we can do reset and scan, and that's gonna go find all of our sensors on the network. So then you will come back and it'll show this TX info. And you'll see that we have eight sensors. So that top, uh, that top thing is our sensors. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then no sensor, all right? So that is showing our sensors. And we don't need to change anything or set anything in there. So we can set groups by different groups of sensors if you had different rooms. We're gonna go to events right now. So our first event is no delay. If one or more in the group hit alarm B, we're gonna do this and you can see relay one, horn and strobe. So we're gonna tr trigger that. We have the event enabled, so it's gonna run that. We come back out here. We go to two. Two is the event. Output two is this relay two. And that is gonna shut down our process. And this one, we're actually going to program a delay in there. And I set this one up where if all sensors and all the groups are not 
if they are less than 50.3 percent then this is going to be on and the reason we wanted to do this i need to change the wiring here but this is going to be between normally open and the neutral and that is going to let it if we lose power it's going to open that and if we get above this point it's going to open that it's running all the time i have it disabled right now so that we don't mess up um, the system that it's controlling while we're messing with it. All right. Three is event three. We're controlling output three, which is relay number three right here. That's the high speed to our fan. So it's just a, uh, we've got it on normally open, so it'll close upon alarm. I set this delay so that it runs for two minutes after the event is over. It'll continue to energize that for two minutes and then it'll pull the signal away. And that way we'll run our fan long enough to be sure that we clear the room. If one or more from all the groups equals alarm A, which is our lower level limit, then we'll kick the fan on. So the method of operations is normal operation. This will be on so that it uh, and this little light will be on but with the cover closed you won't be able to see it this will be on which will keep this energized which will tell the process equipment that it's good right so it'll be closed if we pulled power from it it would go normally open and it would shut off also if our level gets above 50.3 percent it will open as well all right and that'll go off if we hit 20% uh, LEL in the space, then our high speed will engage, which will close this contact and kick our fan on. And if that does not clear the space, then when this hits 50% for alarm one, the horn and strobes right there will go off and they're in the space as well. And then this will trigger at 50.3 just to give it a little bit of differentiation. 50.3, this will go, um, but we're gonna put that on a little bit of a timer. So that way it'll sit at 50% for about three minutes before it does that. And that'll give the guys a chance to shut something down, clean something up, something like that. All right, so you can create new events by selecting here. And you can see you go up. I made a four, which I was just messing around with. But then when you get to five, output is question mark. And so you can set another sequence and you can make something else that controls one of these that you're already controlling. There's also an internal buzzer um, and you can do that. Come back out. The other big thing is if you go into this tests, mode what it's going to do is it'll allow you i'm not going to do it so i don't accidentally set something off for the guys in there but it will enable all the alarms it'll engage all four of these relays so that you can test whatever you have output this is one of our xlr detectors and they are programmable from a Bluetooth app. It's called the SensePoint app. And when you get it, you will be able to uh, connect to these via Bluetooth. And then you can change all the settings. So you can change that green LED to flashing. You can change different set points where it will trigger. The trick to that whole system is these sheets right here. These sheets came with the sensors and they're important to have nearby and labeled. You find the serial number on the sensor and then you match it up with the serial number here. And when you go into the app, it will try to link with that. But unless you have this QR code, you cannot link to it. So you hit use QR code, you scan that and it will start communicating with your sensor that LED will turn blue, and then you can change parameters in there. Uh, you can change the address, you can change whatever you need and want. You can look at the alarm history, you can do your calibrations, you do all of that 
from that. So keeping these handy is important. You can also use the device activation key and the serial number, but that's a lot of things to type in if you have access to this. This is also supposed to be located on a sticker inside the unit, but when I attempted to start them using that QR code, there was some reason that it wouldn't work with my phone. So that may be an option in the future, but or it may be a damaged QR code, it may be too small. I'm not sure what the issue was there. This is the VFD for the gas detection system and the green heck fan for the distillation room. You can see that it's running in auto. You also have a hand and an off switch up there and then you have a bypass. So if you need to run it 100%, you can switch it to bypass and it'll do away with all this. To kill power to all of it, you can use this. You can stop and you can reset or you can stop and run from there. The screen should show remote here and that's gonna run it automatically. If you were to push this, now it's in local. You see local there, and that's going to require you to push run um, to start it on power up. All right, so if we have it there, it should uh, be good. So if you walk up to it and you see it and you want to adjust it, you can just on the fly adjust it up and down to set where it's going to operate. Um, for the time so what you want to where you want to have it is where it's keeping your room perfectly balanced so the doors are not too hard to open or too hard to close all right so if we hit escape here it'll come to a programming menu and the only things to pay attention to here you click yes on quick menu and it gives you a lot of settings so the two settings that we want to pay attention to are our low limit frequency and our upper limit frequency. And we're gonna toggle our operation between those two. So our low limit frequency, we can set, we have it set at 30 Hertz, which is where we wanna run most of the time. And then if we go to upper limit, we've got it set at 60. And the way we have this wired is per this wiring diagram here. I eh, won't do it that way. Per this wiring diagram, and when this is our gas detection system, and when we close that contact, it's gonna drive it to that high speed of 60 Hertz. And then when that is open, like it's shown on here, when that's open, it'll run to low speed, wherever we have that set for our lower limit. All right, the SPR remove factory jumper is a fire safety shutdown. Um, if the fire department or the fire alarm system needs to tie in, that auto run command is to stay in place. And then this VFD bypass run status switch is where the captive air makeup air unit is tied in. And so that's sending the signal to that to start and stop all right other than that there are a lot of settings in here that can be messed with but they should all be set up and there shouldn't be any reason to ever change any of those all right if we just hit escape it'll go back and it'll show you where where you're operating at the moment that is running that fan which is a green heck fan and it's running that captive air makeup air unit uh, which is supplying air to the space.